we've been working with the Inver College with AFRI for the last couple of years actually and so we've done a series of workshops and the first couple were in the classroom exploring development education, critical thinking, questioning, looking at exploring the SDGs, ecosystem restoration is the, the work that the Shield Decree that we do, so how humans are connected to each other and to wider nature. So what we did today, we started in the workhouse in Carrickman Cross and explored the history there and all the suffering that had happened there and the exploitation. And then we moved from there outside of Carrickman Cross where in a stretch of land there is a landlord estate that's still owned and occupied by an absentee landlord that lives in Britain who still owns literally half the side of the towns and shops. Then just slightly up the road from that there is a hotel that's currently being used as a direct provision centre but again the ownership of that is a person from Carrickman Cross and has made more money on direct provision than anyone else in the history of the state. So people look at the workhouse and saying how terrible it is, but it was at a particular time, but then maybe not making the connection to like how we're treating people currently in direct provision centres. And then shortly past that then there's an open to pit mine by a French company that are extracting gypsum. Beside that there a couple of years ago the land split open and I was telling the story about a friend of ours whose grandmother lived on the land for 51 years. With her whole family but still caring for her daughter who was in the 50s but with Down syndrome and special needs so and both of them had to leave after that and both of their health deteriorated after that living on land for 51 years and then having to be moved from it because of the exploitation of a multinational corporation exploiting the land so taking it out of the classroom and into the practical example of the community of all these different issues that are present in this area and looking at like the root causes of problems. So if we want to regenerate nature, if we want to deal with things like pollution, like world problems, climate change, inequality, not just dealing with symptoms, but actually dealing with the causes too. And then a big part of that can be, what can we learn from the past? How can that help us at least understand what's happening today as well? For the first time in my life, I was alone. And yet people were all around me. I lay awake all night on a bed of straw, listening to the roar of groaning and coughing and tossing and turning. The bell rung at 6 a.m. every morning the workhouse was built for 500, but housed nearly 2,000 by then. The kitchen could barely cope with the numbers. We ate our pitiful breakfast of stir about in strict silence. At first, I'm tasked with lugging tubs of slop down from the dormitories and emptying them into the privies. Later, I was put to scouring floors and windows. We worked on our knees all day, bruised, back aching, and hands rubbed raw. Madam smiled one day as she passed me by. Her spirit remained unbroken. I buried these stolen moments down deep inside, where no one could take them from me. I was just shocked to see how people were treated because as a kid I was born in 2005 and everything was basically handed to me. I I didn't know what, you know, problems like that was. I didn't have to grow up with like problems of food and of disease that couldn't be treated and it's, it's scary because you have kids ages 5, 10 going into these basically concentration camps and that's why history is very important to show us that these events happened and these buildings need to stay to show the future that we can't let this happen again. I start from the famine and since Ireland at the time was owned by the British, they had food. They had all the food in the world to feed them. It's just the problem was the British didn't want to share it. So they had to, you know, put the potatoes and start farming it. And then they would sell it for a bit of money and just live off it. But then it, here comes the blight and infects the potato, and basically the one source of what fed the whole Irish population disappeared. It turned into this 
mush disgusting thing that no one can eat because there's just nothing in it. I can understand that, especially people in Ukraine and Palestine, the land's getting bombarded by the opposing forces and it's, it's scary because they have nowhere else to go. Like the land they used to live on, let's just say you're a farmer, you would have lived on that land for generations and just it all gone in the flash of an eye. With the workhouse, you see, I used to read these books and watch this show about foundling hospitals and workhouses. And as a child, I just thought that was fiction up until I was around nine or ten, learning that it was real. I remember when I was in fourth class going to the Dundalk one and walking around thinking, like, my ancestors could have been there from either side of the family and how they felt. The discrimination really about people with disabilities that still goes on today, like, I happen to know a fair few people with disabilities and the way they get treated, even when I'm around, it's just hard to see and look at. In each of those cases you have the few making a lot of money off the many, so in, like whether it's the workhouse, it's the landlords, whether it's the direct provision centre, it's private landlords, or whether it's the mine, it's multinational companies too. So again, these seemingly disconnected topics and issues, how all these issues are interconnected too, and actually we need to ask better questions. So we're right to be annoyed at many of the, these issues, but then actually do we blame the people suffering because of them, or do we look at the root causes of like what are the systems that are actually creating them in the first place? we should all work together to achieve the same goal because take the war in Ukraine for example one side is supporting Russia one side is supporting Ukraine and it shouldn't be about supporting who's better or who's right it should just stop this war in general because there's people dying and who does that help who does that help when there's poor mothers crying that their sons are dead and they have to move away from their own country like, they're moving away and they have to speak a whole different language to communicate with the residents of that country. And people should just get together and forget about the differences in the past. That's already gone. That's in the past. Everyone should just forget it and just be great to each other. That's what happens. Hate creates hate. And that's why we have, like, racism. Because someone thinks they're better than someone else and sexism. We wish we can get rid of those problems, but hatred isn't an easy thing to get rid of. People who benefit would probably be the arms company and anyone inside the weapons industry because, I mean, someone has to make the ammunition, the weapons, the tanks, the jets, and people are going to benefit off it, which I wouldn't be surprised if whoever is benefiting off this wants it to keep going because it's more money. And in the end, people who do terrible things for money, it's just that's been in society ever since this world was made. It's just corruption and money.